Hi, my name is Elisa Ripley, and I have been teaching elementary art for 15 years and art in general for 29 years. I have also been coaching the UIL Art Smart Contest for the past 15 years. I have found many students have gained a really wonderful and great appreciation for art by doing this contest. This contest is actually three different tests put into one. First, there are pictures. You will have 30 pictures, all famous paintings, that have an artist and a title. You are required to memorize the last name of the artist and the title. That is one part of the test. The second part of that aspect of the test is your spelling. You are also required to be able to spell these words correctly. Some of the names will be foreign names, and so practicing spelling is very important. And some of the words in the titles will be foreign words. Once again, making it important to practice your spelling. The other aspect of this test is known as art history and it deals with the history involved with the pictures as well as being able to analyze the pictures. So there's two parts to that. So analyzing the pictures actually begins with your understanding of the basic elements of art. That is line, texture, color, value, space, shape, rhythm, form. In your glossary of definitions that will be provided to you by your coach, those are many of the words that are going to come up and you need to know the definition in order to answer questions about the paintings. This will also cover the principles of design, which is pattern, rhythm, unity, emphasis, proportion, contrast, once again, these words will be in your vocabulary and are very important to learn in order to answer those questions. Studying for this test is the same as studying for first year college level art history. It is actually a very fascinating subject because throughout time before we had photographs, the way that history was recorded many times was through paintings or drawings. And so as you study them, it's also very important to know what was going on at that time in history. All art is a reflection of current events or a current state of mind being reflected into the image. You're going to see many different types of paintings. Once again, I'm gonna list things that will be in your vocabulary. You're gonna have portraits, landscapes, cityscapes, abstract, semi-abstract. Once again, all these words are vital for being able to answer the questions on the test. Now, to study for the different parts of this test, I highly recommend that the vocabulary words are put into a card form so that you could have the name of the words you need to learn on one side, and the definition is on the other. Being able to learn all of these and even practice with your teammates is vitally important. You're also gonna end up receiving cards where the picture will be on the front, sometimes with the artist's name and the title will be on the back. But the cards can also be made the other way around so that the artist's name is on the back. You will also need to be able to read from the booklet where in the booklet there will be around three paragraphs that go over the picture. When it comes to the second half of the test, all the answer to those questions is what you will read here. While you read this, this will help you to understand how you need to look at the pictures, how to find the lines, the shapes, the forms in these pictures to answer those questions. Spelling 
I highly recommend that you write out those words at least once a day. I have my students do about three or four um, different artists and different titles, and I have them write those out five times a day. So I usually give them a notebook all by themselves just for spelling. When you do Art Smart, you get the same pictures for two years in a row. So I highly recommend that if you do Art Smart this year, you will do Art Smart next year. You will score higher on your second year, and that gives you a lot of time to memorize all that. So that you understand how this is going to work on testing day. And you understand how much your points are worth. Okay, so when you go in for the test, there will be 15 pictures. They will be introduced to you starting with number one. This will be the paper that you work with. You must be very careful to notice that right there it says artist. So here is where the artist last name will go. Over here, it's the title. So on this side is where the title will go. If you accidentally get this mixed up and put the title here and the artist here, it's wrong and you will get no points. If you accidentally put it on the wrong line, you will get no points. Each answer is worth two points. So your first one being the artist, you spell it correctly and you get it correct, it's two points. If you misspell it, it will only be one point. Now for the title, some titles are going to be long. Some titles are going to have com commas and exclamation marks and quotations and you have to memorize each of those little things because missing a comma will mean that you only get one point. It will be counted one point off for missing that comma. A very common mistake that numerous students make is they don't capitalize the letters of each noun in the title. If you miss one capital letter, you will get marked off one point for the entire answer. So this side of the test right here is worth 160, no, I'm sorry, excuse me, it's worth 60 points. Then when we do the other part, it's also worth 60 points, so your total could be 120 points. For the second half of the test, you will be handed a booklet. When the person leading ArtSmart tells you to open it and begin, you will do that. You will notice that it will say Art Element section on your answer sheet right there, Elements. Make sure you put your answer by the correct number. If you get this in the wrong column, it will be marked wrong. And yes, spelling also matters on this. When you get to the section that it will say art history section, at that point, you have to make sure that your answers go on this side under history. Once again, if they're in the wrong spot, next to the wrong number, they will be marked wrong. That is the basics of ArtSmart. You are all very capable of learning this material and you will gain a greater appreciation for art as a result. I'm very proud of every student who has ever done ArtSmart with me. And when I have a student who starts in Art Smart in fourth grade, they make a commitment to be on that team all the way through eighth grade. It will very much put a positive spin on your education when you start learning the impact that fine arts can have, and especially just when we look at the pictures. It's fascinating. It's a lot of beautiful images out there for us to learn. I wish you all the absolute best of luck.